Trevor Moran just made a brand new video from rehab and it's super awesome that he's sharing his experience to inspire others. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but Tana Mojo has recently got a lot of backlash from her MTV show because a lot of people in the community think that she is not properly supporting Trevor Moran's recovery. So as a recovering drug addict and alcoholic with some experience, I wanted to share my thoughts on the situation. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health, addiction recovery, and something I like to do is try to see what's going on in the YouTube community to see what we can learn from it. And I like to share my a little bit of my experience to hopefully increase awareness, educate some others, and all that. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, all right? So yeah, I, I've seen a bunch of stuff about Tana Mojo lately and I haven't really followed anything that she's been doing for, I don't know, a while now, it's been months. So I finally uh, checked out Spill's video last night to get caught up to speed and seeing that people were accusing Tana Mojo of being a bad friend, not supporting recovery, and everything I thought I would chime in. So those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Chris. I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I've been clean and sober for about seven and a half years. My drugs of choice started off with alcohol, then my primary drug of choice became prescription pills. But I dabbled, I dabbled with about anything that would get me messed up, all right? I also worked at a dual diagnosis drug and alcohol rehab center, so we dealt with mental illness as well as addiction, okay? Although I am not a licensed professional, I ran a lot of groups, I worked with a lot of people one-on-one -on -one to help them hopefully stay sober, all right? So anyways, um, before we dive into Tana Mojo's episode for the MTV show, I wanted to shine a light on Trevor Moran going back to rehab and touch on a few points from his video, okay? And hopefully this will educate anybody out there who has a friend who is trying to get sober because I think that's one of the main issues when it comes to the relationship between Tana Mojo and Trevor Moran. I'm in rehab again. And the last video I made, I didn't know much about the rehab world. Um, I guess, sorry, I just did my makeup, I just messed it up. Um, I didn't know much about the rehab world. Apparently all I did was go to detox. So detox is basically to make sure that I don't have a seizure and die. They put you on medications like anti-seizures and um, medicines that help with the withdrawals. And you're there for like a week. And then they, they set you free. All right, so yeah, I think it's it's important to uh, distinguish the difference between uh, levels of care, okay? So the treatment facility I worked at, it was like this all-encompassing facility, okay? We, at our primary facility, it was inpatient, it held about 150 people, and we had a nursing station, we had doctors there, so we had various levels of care. We had detox, we had inpatient, we had partial hospitalization program, as well as intensive outpatient, okay? So yeah, detox, I actually understand where Trevor's uh, coming from, and there is some confusion. That's why I hope people get educated on the various levels of care. Back when I was trying to get sober, I, I went to a detox. I was there for about four or five days, and yes, like Trevor explains in his video, is to help you safely get off the alcohol or the drugs. And listen to me very carefully. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth right now. You should never, ever, ever, ever try to detox on your own. You should always go to a medical facility, okay? Like Trevor shared, he could have had seizures, and these seizures can kill you, okay? And I know a lot of us, like when we're trying to get sober, we want to just quit cold turkey. We want to prove that we don't need the drugs, we don't need the alcohol and, and all that stuff. But the, the reality is, it can kill you, okay? So when I saw uh, Trevor Moran talking about going to rehab in Tana's video, which I watched uh, first, um, and he said he went through detox, and then he was doing this kind of like uh, Postmates rehab, you know, what I personally recommend if you have a severe addiction, if you are somebody with a chronic relapse, typically inpatient is the best option for you. So I'm super proud of Trevor for doing that because I know so, so, so many people, in fact, one of my best friends, he refused to do inpatient rehab. So he went to an outpatient and he ended up relapsing, but he ended up going back to an inpatient facility and he's been sober for, I think this summer it'll be five years. 
hard not to put yourself in the character's shoes. Or, for instance, for real, Amy Winehouse. And then I just had this, <sighs> I had this image replaying in my brain. What if someone came to my apartment and just saw me dead on my couch? <laughs> What if somebody like... <laughs> Man, I can relate so much to what Trevor's talking about with, you know, the whole Amy Winehouse thing. Um, not only, you know, that fear of people finding you, but like at the end of my addiction, I didn't care if I lived or died. And it's, it always just gives me the chills just thinking about that situation I was in. Like I'm a father, right? And aside from being a father, I'm a son, I'm a friend, you know, I had so many people in my life who love me. And the way addiction works and that insanity you get, like you start to think that this world would be a better place without you. You know what I mean? But like Trevor Moran talking about crying, like constantly when you first get sober, like, pff, hi, like I was crying constantly. I was crying at the dumbest things. I, I'll never forget. I was watching TV and a commercial came on for like car insurance and there was a family there and I just started bawling my eyes out. Like just all these emotions that you've been masking for so long, they just come rushing back, but it's good. Like one of the amazing parts of recovery is we get to feel, right? Because we numb it for so, so, so long. And, you know, the thing about feelings, and this is for everybody, drug addict, alcoholic or not, like, we have to feel our feelings. And along with the bad comes the good. And that's that, that kind of balance, right? But what we learn in our recovery is that we can get through all those emotions. Like, why does it have to be like this? And I don't feel ashamed. I don't feel ashamed for getting help. Because I know when I upload these videos, it makes people less afraid because I get messages all the time. People just say that I've helped them get sober. And I mean, I, I guess that's good, but like when I get those messages, that's what makes me feel ashamed because I probably read those messages drunk, on my couch, half a bottle in. And that's when I feel ashamed. So finally, right there, that's the last clip I'm going to use from Trevor's video, is he talks about inspiring others, right? And, you know, I understand that guilt that he talks about, like, you know, not being able to stay sober or being drunk or high while other people are saying that they inspired you. Um, Macklemore actually has a great song called Starting Over, where he shares a little bit about that as well. But anyways, um, one of my favorite quotes from, you know, 12-step programs is this no matter how far down the scale we have gone we will see how our experience can benefit others all right like one of the reasons that i i am fully transparent about my past my story and everything like that is my hope is that it can benefit others right i hope people learn um from you know not only my mistakes but also my triumphs right like i i'm somebody who should have never ever ever survived my addiction i went you know, out to California and got sober and I had a 10% chance of living because of congestive heart failure. Like I had so many medical issues, you know what I mean? Um, I was hopeless, I lost everything. I had no money, no friends. My family wouldn't talk to me, you know? None of that stuff, but look where I'm at today. You know what I mean? So we share our experience to hopefully inspire others. We want other people to look at us and say, oh man, if that person can do it, maybe I can too. And regardless of whether, you know, we're staying sober or not, like just making that courageous step to get help like Trevor Moran has, like that will inspire others, especially like I love when people with big platforms openly discuss this stuff, you know what I mean? And it looks like Trevor Moran's doing well, you know, and, and now that we're going to jump into the Tana Mojo portion of this, like hopefully he, he has a new kind of uh, strategy for staying sober, like the best thing, like I'll tell you this, my secret to recovery, the secret to my recovery is looking at all of my past relapses, right? Looking at everything I was doing and everything I refused to do, and then I did the opposite. And here I am sober seven and a half years later. 
all right? So first I wanna check out this clip right here. Like I just wanted to get up. Are you inviting Trevor? I don't know, should I? Um, I don't know if inviting Trevor to stuff where I know all of us are gonna get up is the right thing to do. I haven't like figured that out yet, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Trevor's definitely had a really big struggle with sobriety, so I think I'm at a point where I'm trying to be very gentle with him. Because of course we want our best friend Trevor there, but also if it's gonna hurt him, like that's the last thing I want. So right there when Tana Mojo is talking about how she doesn't know if she should invite him. Like check this out, one of the reasons I make these videos is because a lot of people don't understand addiction. Like Tana discusses like, I don't know what to do in this situation. And although if you're the loved one of an addict or an alcoholic, like you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. I remember I wanted my, my son's mom to read the AA big book and understand me and understand my addiction, right? But if you really do want to support someone, like first off, treatment usually has like a family therapy or, and you could bring in not only your friend, your family, but your friends as well, right? Understanding more about addiction and the do's and don'ts, like that will help you better support your loved one. It's, it's just a little bit more difficult, like, the second time around. Why do you think that is? I was so used to being, like, drunk for the whole year of 2019, and then, like, finally getting sober again. It was, like, this, like, crazy endorphin rush. I guess they call it, like, a pink cloud, where you're, like, in this crazy happiness. And then when I got out again, I was like, well, I don't feel like that pink cloud. Anymore. So when uh, Trevor's talk, talking about the pink cloud, that is something a lot of us experience, okay? Like, when you first get sober, you just wanna scream it from the rooftops. Like, you're just feeling amazing. And what I would always warn my clients in rehab was, when we say this too shall pass, it's, it's primarily said about those bad feelings and those bad experiences, but we also gotta remember it for the good ones, right? Like I'm a huge fan of like Buddhist philosophy and they talk about impermanence, like nothing stays the same forever, right? So I, even now with seven and a half years clean, I have to be mindful of those pink clouds and when everything's going great, like I try not to leave you know the moment or what's happening today but i am realistic and it's about setting expectations right when i get those good feelings or life is just like killing it or like chris delia says life rips right i am just mindful you know that this will pass at some point but that's more of a reason to stay in the day and fully appreciate how good everything is going but what I've seen a lot of people do is make the mistake of hitting that pink cloud, thinking it's gonna stay that way forever and stop doing the work that helps them stay sober. I completely understand how hard it is to take care of yourself. And even if it seems like something so little to the average person when you're depressive, you're fighting these demons. It is very hard sometimes to make those little steps to take care of yourself. We're here for you. I feel like we all, in 2019, we're all just like, oh, we're okay, like, whatever. And now we're all like, oh my God, like. We're falling apart. We're not yeah. okay. Like, I feel like 2020 is like super the year of like. Transformation. Yeah, and like rehabilitation. We've done all the crazy shit. Like, if we just I like, know. literally just like focus on our craft and like literally transform this year, like there is no stopping us. I want to be like that so bad. Think about it like in the sense of what you were saying about how you were like drunk every day, like you were in this routine. Like think about it now as like you're getting into a different routine of life. Like well, I feel sober, the same way. healthy, like doing it's a things. New year, like, too. like let's go to the gym, let's work out. About a month ago, Trevor decided to get sober, but recently he had a relapse. I love Trevor. I want Trevor to live a long, healthy, happy life. Last time he went to rehab, he didn't really have that many people visiting him. This time I want to be there to like show my support and say, yo, I actually do care. Are you coming to Girls Night Out tomorrow? With who? Tana. What, is it um, just girls? Does that even apply to me? Yeah. I feel like you could probably pull more drinks from guys than I could. Well, I can't be drinking. Oh, yeah. maybe that's why she didn't... All right, so I wanted to use two, two clips right there, okay? So... It's interesting to me, and this is just purely opinion. I saw a lot of people saying, you know, Tana Mojo is a bad friend. She's not supporting his recovery. Like, first off, these 
these episodes, like Tana went on this little Twitter rant, these episodes are chopped up and everything and edited, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, it looked like they were being pretty supportive, like discussing it, um, with Trevor asking how they can help him, talking about some healthy habits and everything like that. And Tana had no plans on inviting Trevor to this night out, all right? But then, as you saw, uh, what's her name, Ashley? She was the one who was encouraging Trevor to come out. So I just wanted to make that publicly clear. Like, I'm, I, I know Tr Tana Mojo is the big name on this show, but Tana did not encourage Trevor to go that was Ashley. And as far as Ashley goes, um, it's, <clears throat> I have mixed opinions about that kind of pressure to go out. A lot of people just don't understand addiction and recovery. And like, it, it's not necessarily malicious. Like, check this out. Like, even with all my years sober, I still have a friend. I still have a friend in my life who still asks me if I could just have one beer. <laughs> right? And I don't get mad at him. I'm just like, oh, you silly little ignorant boy. You know what I mean? And it's my responsibility to stay sober. And something we're about to talk about is it's our responsibility to make the right decisions and decide where we're going. Like, I live in Las Vegas. I live in Sin City. And I've been able to stay sober all these years. And it's because of the decisions that I personally make. So I told Trevor about tonight. Why? Because, like, I thought you invited him. I just, like, didn't even think of a, about, like, him being sober. Yeah. Like, I was literally just like, oh, are you going tomorrow? <sighs> I wish Trevor could just go to the <laughs> we go to and, like, be fine. And now it's, like, with every event I have, I feel like I have to, like, weigh out if he should be there or not. He said he wanted to come. He said he was, like, feeling up to it. So right there, it's really interesting seeing um, the conversation between them. Like, I was sitting there and I was trying to be very mindful of, you know, what I was experiencing. Like, like... I knew those conversations were happening with my friends, but I would never have to hear about them. I would never have to see them. Like maybe, like some people do. Some people do hear those conversations, but um, like an unrealistic expectation, a very unrealistic expectation is just because we got sober, everybody around us has to change. That is such an unrealistic expectation. Like my sponsor always reminded me, like just because I'm trying to change doesn't mean the rest of the world has to change as well. Like setting that expectation, like one of my favorite quotes from the AA Big Book is, our expectations are inversely proportionate to our serenity. All right, you say your expectations here, your serenity is down there. So expecting other people to stay sober just because you did, not realistic. I don't think Trevor um, expected that, but for loved ones, like you don't have to change everything, but it is the recovering addict's responsibility. It is the recovering alcoholic's responsibility who they are going to be around, right? Like 90% of my friends, like 90 plus percent of my friends drink you know, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, where uh, pot is legalized and everything like that. Like, I have plenty of friends who still drink, party, you know, do whatever. It's just I make the decision of whether or not I'm going to be around that. He looks absolutely miserable, and I feel terrible. First one to literally pass out wins. <laughs> I don't know what you win. My heart is pounding. I'm starting to get like anxiety shakes. I'm just, I'm really uncomfortable in this situation right now. So lastly, right there, uh, Trevor ended up leaving that situation. All right. And he talks about that anxiety and I can relate like sometimes like the thing is in early recovery, we can make really stupid decisions. Like I'm telling you right now, like I made literally every bad decision in the book when I first got sober, my first year clean, everything they tell you not to do. I did it. All right. And I ended up going to a bar when I was only like pff, two or three months sober and I started having a panic attack, like trying to hold in that craving and want to drink and everything like that. Like I was like, <laughs> right? And here's the thing, like in early recovery, it's like you still have this open wound that's healing, but eventually you become more resilient and you can start branching out a little bit, right? 
So for example, like something I love to do and I've always loved to do is go to concerts, to go to shows, right? All the shows here in Las Vegas are at casinos. And one of the promises I made to myself was I wasn't gonna get sober if it was going to take away all of the fun things that I love doing, right? But I'm just like smart about it now. Like my, my weekends aren't like me hanging at the bar, right? Like um, something I learned is we don't go places that can put us at risk unless we have a good reason to do so. So like the only time I really go out um, to that environment is if I go to a concert. I go to maybe two or three a year when a band I like uh, is in town, okay? And I have no problem being around, you know, people getting drunk and booze and everything like that. Um, I have a friend who plays, she's a musician here in town, and I'll go to her shows to support her. That is a good reason to be there. I have friends who have birthday parties and they invite me. I go there to be with them and, you know, uh, celebrate their birthday and all that. I have a good reason to be there. But Finally, I want to talk about this. Like, is Tanamojo responsible for his relapse? Absolutely not. Nobody is, okay? Like, if we're gonna stay sober, we need to take 1,000% responsibility. Nobody can make us relapse. And realistically, between the time that was filmed and the time that Trevor Moran just made his video from rehab, we have no idea how much time passed. We have no idea the decisions that he made between then and now. But if for some reason Trevor Moran watches this video, but even more so if you're watching this video and you've struggled with addiction or you know someone who does, we have to change the people, places, and things in our lives. And when we talk about that, we have to be mindful of where we're hanging out, what our new fun activities are. This is why I had to have a sober support group, right? Because you know when all my friends were partying, there were some nights where I just had to hang out with like my sober friends. It wasn't this expectation that my non-sober friends were going to not drink because again, that is an unrealistic expectation. Now, when it comes to the people in your life, like it looks, it looks like that group of friends will support Trevor's recovery, but they don't fully understand the disease of addiction. It sounds like they're trying to, you know, but it doesn't look like they are overtly, from what we've seen, it doesn't look like they are overtly pressuring him to go out and drink and everything like that. Like, Trevor needs to make the right decisions. And although he didn't talk about it in his new video, I'm hoping that he is strategizing for when he gets out. Like, one of the difficult things is when you live in that lifestyle, okay? When your friends are constantly partying, when you live in LA, when you're young, when you're 21, 22, it is extremely, not hard, but it's it's more challenging for young people to stay sober. Like I got sober at 27 years old. So I was 21 for six years and I was able to legally go out and drink and everything like that for a while. For young people in their early 20s, that is hard, man. That is hard, but I've seen it done before. I've met people who got sober at 16, 17 years old, all right? But it all comes down to the decisions that we make and how we are going to strengthen our recovery. Like, there may come a point in Trevor Moran's recovery where he can go out with them, right? But for me personally, I'm telling you, with seven and a half years sober, not only do I limit it, but I limit the time that I'm there because there comes a time, there comes a time, like you show up to the party, everybody's just kind of like getting their, their drink on, then they start to get a little bit buzzed, then they start getting drunk, right? And that's dope, that is dope for them, okay? But as a sober person, you're around it and everybody is like pretty much blackout drunk and acting belligerent, it's like, all right, it's time, it's time for me to leave. You know what I mean? But I, you know, one of the cool things is like once you have some resiliency and some recovery, you're the designated driver, baby. Everybody should have a sober friend because we will get you home safely. All right. But again, huge congratulations to Trevor for going back to rehab and not giving up. I have seen so many people give up after a relapse. So I am just so proud of anybody who has the strength and courage to go back to treatment. All right. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at therewiredsoul.com slash shop, as well as everybody who gets merch from the merch store. You're all awesome. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.